This is the Catholic Daily Journal for Thursday, May the 16th, 2019. It's the feast of St. Eubald of Guppio, a 12th century bishop in Umbria near Assisi and Orvieto. He was a noble by birth and was educated. He joined the local monastery of San Secundo until he was called by the bishop to become the head priest of the cathedral. Now, in some cities, bishops have established what are called canonries of the cathedral. And this is a group of specially chosen and highly qualified priests who operate the cathedral, advise the bishop and the like. Now, in some places, that's purely honorary. In some places, it's very practical. But in Gubbio, it was very practical. St. Eubald was chosen to be the head honcho of this group in his diocese. And once he was installed and got reconnected with the world and the news and the happenings of the day, he heard about a group of canons in Vienna, a very select group. He heard that they had turned their canonry into a sort of kind of monastic group. And Eubald was keen on the idea and he visited Vienna to get the details. He came back and he put the whole thing into effect in Gubbio, which went over very, very well. Eubald is remembered across Italy as an incredibly holy man and a top-notch leader and manager. He died in 1160 and was canonized 30 years later by Pope Celestin III. Today in 1532, amidst the never-ending drama and cholesterol-related woes of Henry VIII, Sir Thomas More resigned as the Lord Chancellor of England. Henry, of course, was a fairly good king, but he lost his mind when it came to his personal life. He had wife troubles on an epic scale, and that put him at odds with the Pope, who at some point had to put the reins on on the number of wives that anybody was allowed to have. And when Henry officially broke things off with the Church of Rome and basically made himself Pope of England, his chancellor, the very Catholic Thomas More, basically said that he had to resign. He couldn't condone it. In his role as the chancellor, he argued against it. But he was loyal to his king, and he intended to live quietly and pray for Henry's conversion. As with most folks who find themselves in serious sin, Henry couldn't handle anyone in the universe not approving of his evil choices. And so Henry ultimately had more put to death, along with several others, bishops, churchmen, who refused to sign documents expressing their support for Henry's lunacy. More is considered a martyr for his faith. After his death, folks began to discover that More had been a real master of the spiritual life. His prayer and penances were heroic, and his writings, both in the spiritual life and in the philosophy and theology of law, were truly brilliant. In 1843 today, 1,000 pioneers from Elm Grove, Missouri, set out on the first wagon train headed for the Pacific Northwest along what would come to be known as the Oregon Trail. We don't know much about the individual people or whether they succeeded or died of dysentery, but they were pioneers among pioneers. Finally, today is the birthday in 1831 of David Edward Hughes. He was born in the UK, but raised in the US. He was a musician and a professor of music. He was especially good with his hands and was a virtuoso harpist. He tinkered with all kinds of things and managed to come up with some very useful inventions. First, he created a telegraph machine that could print out the message, which was a big deal. He took that to London to strike it rich and started to play around with other kinds of sounds which could be transmitted across wires. That's when he stumbled upon a combination of wires, electricity, a magnet, and a fabric diaphragm, which, when put together give you a microphone. Hughes was a brilliant experimenter, and without his work, I'd be sitting here talking to myself. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.